Hello everyone, Storm one here. Today we'll be tracking possibly for maybe another significant severe weather outbreak that may happen across pretty much some of the similar areas that's experiencing some severe weather uh, right now here. And the next significant severe weather threat potential is looking to be Friday, which is looking to be a little bit of a better setup than what we're having today. So let's go ahead and get started with the SPC outlook for today. We got a pretty large enhanced risk area ready for uh, southeastern half of Arkansas, northern Louisiana, and also for northwestern uh, Mississippi as well, with that slight risk expanding all the way up into northern Missouri as well. Even got a marginal risk expanding as far north as the Illinois so Wisconsin state line with another marginal risk for east central Minnesota and northwestern Wisconsin. So the tornado threat is quite elevated today. We do have a 10% area within that enhanced risk, which does include places like Little Rock, Greenville, Jackson, Shreveport, and also for Memphis as well. The wind will also be there. The hail threat should stay kind of in central Missouri, most of Arkansas, and even for far northeastern Texas and northern Louisiana as well. We do actually do have some severe weather ongoing for some of these places in here, including a couple tornado warnings in northern uh, Louisiana here. And as you can see here, it looks like we may have a possible tornado heading right towards Hall Summit. As of right now, we've got a couple tornado warnings ongoing as well. And the Corish coefficient. Yeah, so it looks like we do have a tornado ongoing right now, just to the west of Hall Summit, with an air area rotation just to the north. As well, heading right towards Helfin right now. Shreveport is not under any tornado warning, but we do have a severe thunderstorm warning down nearby uh, San Augustine right there as well. We did have more severe thunderstorm warnings really from central Missouri down into central Arkansas here. Right now it's a little bit more quieter in Arkansas and Missouri as of right now. It's a little bit more active earlier. But it's not completely done yet. You can see here we still got this front to deal with right here. You can see we do have some new development just to the northwest of Little Rock. Here's some good news though. We got a lot of convection ongoing here which is decreasing your severe weather potential which which that's some good news there. And these thunderstorms do stretch all the way up into Desmone, uh, Iowa here. I'm pretty sure I did not pronounce that right. But really for South Central Iowa, it's currently experiencing some, thunder, some thunderstorms up there as well. And a lot of these storms, well, storms up there are moving to the north, but these storms down here will be continuing to move to the east here which will be dying down as you kind of get into the overnight hours as well. So let's check out the herd model here. And you can see it's actually doing an, kind of an alright job as of right now. It's a little bit slow with these thunderstorms as of right now. You can see here some severe weather potential may come up maybe somewhere in northern Mississippi and western Tennessee. But eventually those should die out as we kind of get into the middle of the night here. And then your severe water risk does move to the east here across Alabama, Tennessee to Kentucky, all the way up into southern Michigan as well. So it leads us to day two, which is tomorrow. We're going to have marginal risk for severe weather, really from the southeast coast of Louisiana in the panhandle of Florida, all the way up into southern Michigan here. Primary threats, these are pretty low end threats. The tornado threat, we may get to see a couple rotating thunderstorms from for some of these areas. Damage and winds will also be there. And, there. and hail will be a little more focused across the south. Not looking to be too big of a deal on that day as well, which we'll take a look into the high rise name for that. And you can see here, if your storm's continuing, down across Louisiana. It looks like it's also a little bit too slow as well. 
And then you kind of get to see some of these storms kind of blossom up here. You can see here you got some in central Kentucky down into central Tennessee. And then you got some other ones across southern Michigan and even across central Ohio and northwestern Ohio. And maybe into northeastern Indiana as well with some pretty good thunderstorms. Eventually those should die down so we kind of get into the overnight hours as well. Again, probably threats, probably a spin of tornado and some strong winds and hail will be a little bit more focused across the south. And yeah, there's another marginal risk area for northern Louisiana, southern Arkansas, and northeastern Texas as well. Day three, which is Friday, we actually had a special update for the SPC. They actually upgraded to enhanced risk this afternoon for south central Mississippi and also for far northeastern Louisiana. Do not be surprised if this gets expanded or another area gets added for a lot more of these regions here. Large hail is looking to be one of your biggest threats right now where we have a lot of cape going on in some of these areas and also for a lot of lap breaks going on as well. This risk actually may move to the north as well. So I'm also hinting on some pretty good thunderstorms. As far north as southeastern Missouri, well, probably just southern Missouri in general. But this is definitely got to keep an eye on here as well, which as we go back to the high-risk NAM for this one, you can see here as we kind of move into Friday here, you got some isolated thunderstorms. Some of these could be strong as well, just your typical popcorn top storms here. See, they could be some decently big ones in Kentucky. And then as you kind of get into the later on the day on Saturday, check out what's going on in western Arkansas here, even including back into central Texas. Got a pretty good area of thunderstorms starting to develop. And eventually, check that out. This becomes a quite an impressive squall line here, especially across northern Arkansas, going all the way back down across eastern Texas here. If this is right here, that could bring in some big time damage of winds with those line of thunderstorms as well but we do have different solutions here i mean this is just one of the solutions what could happen here i think we can have some scattered cells developing out ahead of it which those will have the better chance to produce some very large hail as well and if we take a look into how much instability there will be which we'll probably have to move our sector to the south central U.S. here. Just to look into the high-risk NAMB here. Because there is going to be a lot of cape at the surface here. There's going to be a pretty impressive amount here. And as you can see here, and keep in mind this is just surface spaced. And you can see here, check out all this cape out here. I mean, tons of cape here really for this time of year. You really only need uh, about 1,000 joules per kilogram of cape, but that's it. And you're talking about cape numbers as high as exceeding 4,000 joules per kilogram of cape. Even 4,700, that is a lot. Even along this front here, having a lot of cape there as well. And yeah, talk about a very unstable atmosphere. Check that out. Very unstable atmosphere going on here. 5,000 joules per kilogram of cape at the surface as well. So this will be pretty favorable for some very large hail with some of these storms as well. And check out the uh, lap rates here. Wow, 9.4, 9.1. Those That's pretty high. And also your D cape here. I just learned this yesterday. Uh, I believe it's called down draft cape or something like that. And what this is, this kind of indicates your damage winds rate. And you can see here, that's a pretty high number. I mean, 1,900. So this will be favorable for very large hail and damaging straight line winds. Tornado threat should stay low with some of these storms here as well. And then you can see how your squall line really starts to get its act together. You can tell there by your sharp cutoff here at this point here. That's your squall line of storms on going right down here. As well, like stretching all the way back down the two south central uh, Texas. Well, actually, central Texas. There as well. So, there's going to be a pretty impressive amount of cape out here as well. 
if we check out let's actually check out those lap rates because that's also going to be pretty impressive amount here so this video mostly about friday here and it's looking to be could be a pretty big day in my opinion here and really for lap rates all you really need is like well over a seven and you're talking about numbers as high as a nine that's ridiculously high uh, especially for this time of year and you can see here with numbers as high as a nine yeah that's really going to help bring up that very large hail threat big time thunderstorms and you're talking about numbers as high as 9.5 that's just ridiculously high Again, do not be surprised these areas do get upgraded to enhanced risk. It would not surprise me at all for mainly for the wind and hail. I think the tornado threat should stay a little bit on the low end side, at least for some of these places in here. But we cannot roll out maybe a couple tornadoes in some of these areas as well. Keep in mind of that. So yeah, a pretty impressive amount of lap rates there as well. And if we check out the significant tornado parameters with this we'll check out the NAM in the European model this one in just a moment but as we kind of check this out here you can see here if your significant tornado parameters should you should start this to really ramp up across Arkansas Louisiana and I believe the two portions of Eastern Texas and Mississippi yeah, there you go. As this kind of, as we try to load this in, and yeah, check out those numbers there. As high as a six is some places, so pretty high number here. This is a little bit cherry picked here, but we'll see what it shows here. So pretty good significant tornado parameters. Although one problem I do see here, we have a cap here, so that's going to prevent storms from developing here. But other than that, here, this is a pretty good sounding here. You got a large photograph going on here pretty high critical number a lot of story to velocity decent amount of wind shear especially at the surface here i mean check out that wind direction of height there yeah pretty impressive there and quite a bit of cape so pretty favorable environment here for all hazards here so we could probably see some really big storms on this setup here you see here how those numbers continue up across southern Arkansas here it's really good to depend on if any storms form out ahead of it of that frontier as well which I believe when we just looked it to the highest NAM for the reflectivity it didn't show much of any thunderstorm activity so that's really good to depend on your tornado threat we may be able to see a QLC as tornadoes along the front but if it's just going to be a squall line here then your tornado threat may stay a little bit lower than what these numbers show but we'll see what happens here. But another factor here for really for your tornado threat and wind threat, it's going to be your low level jet here at 850 millibars. So we're going to check this out here. And while that loads, let's go ahead and check out the NAM here. You can see here with the NAM here again for the next couple days here. You can see here it does show some big thunderstorms. For Ohio, Kentucky by tomorrow night. Then here's your next low right here. So you, at this point, your low is somewhere right in here, northern Arkansas here. And these, this low here will be moving quickly to the northeast here. And I can see if any severe weather potential will be a little bit further north, depending on your instability. The things there it kind of shows a different story here, and it actually shows many discrete supercells in that warm sector here it actually doesn't really show much of a squall until later in the night so that's something quite interesting there bam there's your squall in here in the middle of the night here um for arkansas here so it's definitely something we're gonna watch here so definitely we got some absurdities here and then this cluster thunderstorms do move to southeast here and we're gonna see how the northern extent there is gonna go but it's definitely something I'm going to watch here. And the severe weather threat will continue into Saturday. Just off the screen here, talk about good line of thunderstorms as it gets into southeast Alabama, the Florida Panhandle, and also for southwestern Georgia. 
as well. But let's check out this 850 millibar uh, winds real quick. And you can see here, it gets pretty strong as you kind of get into later in the night here. But early on in the day here, there's like nothing out across Arkansas here, which will limit your severe weather potential here, at least early in the day. And then that really starts to pick up as you kind of get into the overnight hours. So it looks to be your primary threat here. The timing is probably going to look to be probably sometime maybe beginning in the evening hours into the overnight hours as well, especially when that load of a jet kicks in. We could be talking about some pretty good thunderstorms. And back across Texas here, you got some areas that just doesn't show much of a low of a jet. Some areas do. But we'll keep an eye on that and see how that's going to go. But let's just talk about the SPC outlook here. Even on today 4, we do have a risk for severe weather for southeastern Alabama, the Florida Panhandle, and also for southwestern Georgia. Like I just showed you with the NAM here, it shows a pretty impressive line of storms. Could be an MCS here. As well, definitely something we got to pay attention to as well. Let's check out that instability here with, from the NAM real quick. See how much CAPE it does show. We'll just take a look at two of the uh, CAPE and the uh, lap rates. Because those, those will be your biggest players for the severe weather setup here. And you, you can see here, talking about a lot of CAPE here. I mean, exceeding 4,000 joules per kilogram, that's a lot. You've got really pretty good Cape numbers as far north as Kentucky. Several Illinois is there. So those folks up there may well have their chance for maybe a severe thunderstorm. Well, maybe a strong thunderstorm if you can get a thunderstorm to blow up up there. So that's going to be an error. But should be staying isolated up there anyways. But... This is still a impressive amount of instability here. I mean, 2,000 joules per kilogram, that's a lot of cape. But when you're talking about 4,000, yeah, that's a whole lot of cape to work with as well. And then you can see here, as you kind of get to Saturday night, you still got cape as high as 4,200 here across eastern Louisiana here. So yet again, a lot of cape that we're going to work with here as well. We'll check, we'll check out the lap rates real quick, and then we'll lastly take a look at to the European model. So, let's check out those lap rates here. And yeah, again, lap rates as high as 9.6. Yeah, that's ridiculously high amount of lap rates there as well. So again, definitely something I got to pay attention to. So let's check out the European model here. Again, severe weather ongoing across portions of Missouri, Arkansas, back down to eastern Texas and northern Louisiana. So we'll continue to move to the east here. We may have some severe weather overnight across Louisiana, Mississippi. And your severe weather threat dies out into Thursday morning. And we'll probably see some, possibly some strong severe thunderstorms up across Indiana and Ohio, Kentucky, maybe as far south as Tennessee. Just indication by the uh, European model. Here comes your next low here coming again, uh, west, pretty much from central Texas, and this will move it quickly to the northeast here. And this is now getting to uh, early Saturday morning. Talk about a lot of thunderstorm activity. Be very noisy night for a lot of folks. This is nine o'clock in the morning. Then we got to watch for these cluster of thunderstorms right here. This is your lightning intensity here. We talk about a lot of lightning with these storms as well. And as you continue on into Saturday here, you may be talking about an MCS here, kind of going along the Gulf Coast here as well. So definitely something we got to pay attention to. And this severe weather risk may go as far north as Kentucky. We'll see how that's going to go and play out. And you can see here, those storms just continue even into portions of central Florida as well. So definitely something we got to watch here as well. It looks like they finally die out, die down as they get to southern Florida there. If that's good to verify here, that's you're talking about long track <laughs> line of thunderstorms as well. We'll see if they stay severe here. But yeah, talking about the possibility for a MCS or a squall line thunderstorms for people across 
the Gulf Coast, really from southeastern Louisiana, probably into portions of central Florida as well. Definitely need to watch for the possibility for some strong to severe thunderstorms during the day on Saturday into Saturday night. So definitely something we got to watch for as well. But anyways, guys, that's all for guys today. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys like this video, hit that like button. If you already like my channel, hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell notification so you never miss an upload. If you guys have questions about this, you can put the comment section down below. I'll answer you guys' questions. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.